Welcome to the Donahue Group. We're glad you could join us for a fast-paced half hour of political conversation and observations. Joining me today, Ken Risto, who's running for President of the United States at some point in the distant future. Not anymore. <laughs> Tom Paneski, Professor of Mathematics at UW Sheboygan. Cal Potter, former educator, former uh, state senator. I am not, contrary to all representations, Sarah Palin. I am Mary Lynn. You could be his running mate. <laughs> <I> could, <laughs> no, we that, couldn't. Wouldn't that be a ticket? Can't um, be from the same state. I am Sorry. actually trying to introduce myself. I'm Mary Lynn Donahue. I'm trying to moderate this uh, group, and so we'll see how well I do this half hour. I may need hazardous duty pay. Interesting times in Sheboygan. <laughs> um, I'd like to start talking about the Van Hollen lawsuit, which has uh, really grown a lot of legs uh, since the last time we spoke. Uh, the Attorney General filed this action in September, I believe, um, alleging that the Government Accountability Board would need to check or recheck um, uh, voter registrations from August, I believe, of 2005 to date. I may have the date wrong. Uh, and just mail-in registrations, not people who registered in person or, um, or registered at the polls. It has caused quite a storm. Um, uh, Lester Pines is representing the Government Account Accountability Board. Lester's my old boss. I clerked for him and Mark Frankel when I was in law school. Very good lawyer. Um, and uh, he brought an interesting initial uh, motion to exclude the, 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 D, uh, the um, Attorney General's office from representing the, from suing the Government Accountability Board because it represents the Government Accountability Board. Mm -hmm. Judge Sumi that really is her name, uh, in, uh, in Madison, and I know nothing of her, I don't, I'm sure she's very skilled, but ruled that there were enough firewalls that were built. So the fact that one part of the Department of Justice was representing the Government Accountability Board didn't prohibit another part of the department from suing. So, so the, the, the lawsuit is on. All sorts of people are in this case now, and I'm just going to see if I can find my little sheet from the circuit court um, um, uh, system. We have the American Federation of Teachers, Madison Firefighters Local 311. Um, we have... Um, I don't see WEAC is, is in quite yet. The American, while you're doing that, the American Federation of Teachers would represent the teachers from Milwaukee, okay. I believe. Milwaukee branch of the NAACP. The only part that, college. And the technical colleges, right. Okay. NAACP, yeah. um, Milwaukee Teachers Association, the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under the Law, the Brennan Center, these are amicus briefs, the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU, the Campaign Legal Center, the League of Women Voters of Wisconsin Education Fund, the American Civil Liberties Union of Wisconsin, the Voting Rights Project of the ACLU, Fair Elections Wisconsin. Those are people who would just write briefs to the court to assist the court in making its determination. Um, for a case that is only... Um, and that's what amicus means? Friend of the court. Friend of the court. Thank you, Professor. Well, just letting our seven faithful viewers in on the, <laughs> in on the, in, in on the Latin. <laughs> And on the Latin here, Friendly We're not all legal beagles. <laughs> I'm sorry, the jargon meter did go off, and I, I, I appreciate right. that gentle correction. It wasn't a correction, it was just a clarification. Um, a gentle clarification. A gentle clarification. So there are six pages in CCAP for a case that's uh, only a month old, so I think that's kind of a record. There's a motion on uh, October 23rd. Um, and I'm not sure what the purpose of it will be or what will happen, but I, I don't know if I'd want to be Judge Sumi at this point. I can't, I can't resist that. I'm sorry. It's S-U-M-I. Well, yeah, it, Maybe I, there's another right. way to... Well, and, and, well, the stakes are pretty high here because, um, as you can see, all these people are concerned because there are going to be, you know, who knows, but there's going to be a tremendous, I would think, given the historic opportunity here uh, in American history, I think you're going to see large numbers of people voting. Uh, and turnout's going to be very, and they've not voted before, and they're going to be voting primarily, perhaps in, in inner city communities where historically there's always been difficulties voting, um, long lines, lack of, la I mean, long lines, lack of uh, machines, ballots, ballots, machines now, I mean, sure. it goes on and on and on, um, and so 
you're really betting the whole ranch that you hope that all of these local registration processes and all of this same day registration processes are all going to work out in such a way that they somehow come in compliance with this federal law that oddly enough is called Help America Vote or something like that, which is going to probably end up being Help America Not Vote so much. Sure. Um, and, and that's not just in Wisconsin, but now there's challenges in Georgia and Ohio. Montana. They're all, Montana, it is, it's a growing list, Florida, I believe, and they're all Republican attorney generals right. who all of a sudden are real concerned about the law. Uh, and so we could expect, and there are concerns, and I watch, and I'm already watching Fox News gin up the, uh, gin up this whole issue already. So the, there seems to be some concern that what's going to happen is, is there going to be a tremendous number of votes challenged in the courts, and and if there are close elections in states, toss-up states, we're going to have this thing resolved in the courts, and it may be quite some time before we actually know who wins certain states and who gets which electoral votes. Right. Well, it has to happen before December 12th. Yes, when the electoral college. That's right. Meets and and, and so we got I, that constitutional clock being played out. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, maybe a moot point in in Wisconsin, because as of today, I personally find this very hard to believe. Obama is ahead by 17 points, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it 11 points? Yeah, it's, congressional it's elections. A, it's sure. a, but and it's that's a part of that issue, too, yeah. I think. Congressional sure. elections. There but could then, be close congressional yeah. elections in various states. I think Kagan and, and Gard will be a very close election. Uh, yep. I think most other elections, there's not a whole lot of... I mean, I think the incumbents are all pretty safe in, in the remaining congressional districts, aren't they? It seems that way. Yeah. Sure. I mean, I think Kagan yeah. has trouble, but... Uh, um, but I think we could have predicted that a couple of years ago. So, um, well, it's interesting. I mean, we have talked on this show repeatedly about the, at that time the State Elections Board dogged determination to keep Accenture as its contractor to put the Help America Vote Act requirements into place. They did a, to say that they did a sorry job of it is such a high compliment. And so now we have a system that is probably not particularly accurate. You also have, and I am sorry to say this, ACORN, which is a wonderful group, historic oh. group of community organizers and people who are out there helping poor people. Well, they seem to have gone a little bit astray. You never want to pay people to register people by the, no, you don't. By the name. No, you don't. <laughs> you can pay them by the hour, but you, know, you don't really want to do that. people respond to economic incentives. <laughs> people do respond to economic incentives. And so I, yeah. you know, I, I think there may be, in Wisconsin, as many as three, four, five hundred 500 people who are improperly registered. Uh, it is not the whole-scale hijacking of the election, dear fr Republican friend, that, that the, the, the Republicans would seem to, to indicate. But I think it's... I think it's yucky. I am very disappointed. Uh, I mean, Acorn really is a traditional, historic group of, of fine people, and so to have them be known this way is, is, is troubling to me. But it really does. Let's just talk about the fact that in this democracy where we have trouble getting people to vote, we can't seem to get the system in place. Cal, well, it's, you, it's become a new battleground um, uh, it, to to win the elections. I mean, and it's, it's got a track record of being successful. The Gore race is a good example. You get to the U.S. Supreme Court, uh, you need a president, um, and they start making decisions based on whatever uh, prejudices they may have and personnel that have been involved in the process. And uh, so they see the success that occurred. Uh, clearly, in my book, uh, Gore won that race. Uh, eight years ago, and if you can replicate that again by litigation, uh, go for it. That's what I think has been determined here. And, and that's why you have all the friends of the court that have filed uh, as friends of the court, because they know what, can, what may happen, and they don't want it to happen uh, to disenfranchise people that are legitimate voters who, because of, uh, well, things we've talked about, the, the, the the software and the company and all that, but just the logistics that have gone on for decades that big cities have a difficult time keeping up decent voter lists. I mean, because people die and they're not, they're not removed. People move. Uh, people use different names at different times, nicknames or middle initials or, they, you know, that's the way it is. And we have to, we should accept 
a certain degree of problems unless we're able or willing to put a lot of money into personnel to clean up these voter lists. And we don't do that. And so rather than having a federal program uh, that says we gotta have all these lists, they should have said, let's see if we can say there's gotta be so many voter machines and so many ballots printed and so many standards and you know things to ensure that things work out well and then there are enough people there to do some checking on these names prior to election day. But that's not occurring. So it's gonna be a mess. And so what are we gonna do? We're gonna elect somebody uh, based on shenanigans after the fact. And that's a sad indictment on this democracy. I don't know how it's gonna play out in Wisconsin where you have <clears throat> same day registration where you can show up that day. Yeah. I mean, is this sort of uh, you know, analogous to you know, swiping my credit card and they just make sure that I actually have a valid credit? I mean, is, there, is each polling place going to have the ability to check online with this master list in Madison when somebody shows up or they're not going to have to do that they're not going to have to do that so then when when I come and register to vote as some of my students will do um, come election day are they casting a provisional ballot then if they're challenged if they're challenged yeah well they're going to be challenged because there's going to be I mean last I mean the last two elections at least in my little polling place in the south side of Sheboygan there were uh, Republican poll watchers there. Mm -hmm. I mean, they identified themselves as such. They made no bones about it. Oh, yeah, I had a fight with one <laughs> in the 2004 <clears throat> well, I, election in, actually, in my fact, polling yeah, place. Yeah, in fact, in my place, the polling, uh, polling people had to have the police remove that one, uh, one uh, poll person because they were literally interfering with the work of the poll. I don't know if the government accountability officials. people have come forth with any type of delineation about what is le least apt to be challenged as far as identification. Mm -hmm. You need two forms of identification. It might be a bill, it might be a driver's license, and so on. I don't know if there's some type of administrative rule or guideline that they've issued to try to prevent you know, some Yahoo at a polling place saying, I don't agree with that this person is a legitimate voter because I don't like their rent receipt or I don't like this, right. or, this or that. I, don't, I, I hope that that's been somewhat clarified. I mean, the statutes clearly state what you need to do, the identification, to vote at the poll, but that's the challenge is what is, I think is going to be the, the problem. Right. right. But, but what Van Hollen is challenging is really a fairly narrow, um, although local clerks do not have the ability to check these, but it's a fairly narrow range or field of people who registered in a certain time period by mail. And that's the challenge. And my sense of it is, because I'm troubled that the Attorney General, whether it be Democrat or Republican, would be so closely aligned with a presidential candidate. But it seems to me that, just following on, on Ken's theory, is that the, the thought is just to call the election into doubt and, and not really to challenge any particular voter one way or the other. It would appear in Wisconsin Gore won by 10,000, Kerry won by 6,000. If these polls are correct, and I, I'm not sure they are, Obama has, stands to win by far greater than that, so that they're really, the, the, the election would not be call, called into question. But if you've got a, a margin of 6,000 and you can oh. call into question four or 5,000 sure. of those Absolutely. votes, my goodness. <clears throat> I well, mean, the, that's. Supposedly, the, the critics of Van Hollen are that he filed a suit after he and several of his colleagues met at the Republican National Convention. And so uh, suddenly they must have had a Karl Rove meeting and said, this is a tool that you need to have in your toolbox. Go out there, folks, and file these suits. And if we need them, they'll be helpful. And <clears throat> it's something that we can't, we, we got to our, to our uh, service if we need it. Yeah. Well, it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. And, um... Um, it's hard enough for people to vote. You'd, I'm, I'm really looking for a non-anarchy situation yeah. <laughs> on the day after the election. Well, and Andy, we've talked about this before. If there had been, and if it has been evidence of, you know, fairly extensive, pervasive voter fraud across this country that would call elections into question, all of this Sturm und Drang, as my grandma used to say, might be worth it, but th there just isn't that, right. there just isn't that evidence that in modern times anyway, that, that, moder that fraud has led to some person being elected um, mm -hmm. because of problems at the polls or people showing up. There's lots of, as Kel said, there's lots of ways we can make this system better. 
but we have to spend some money. You know, you, you can't, you know, democracy, you know, democracy ain't cheap. That's my and, theme, I guess, today. And it's not neat and clean. It's not so, neat and clean either. Well, let's segue right into then um, uh, Justice Gableman, uh, who, as you know, won a um, hotly contested and ugly, ugly, ugly race for a Supreme Court, um, is facing trouble on two fronts. Um, the Judicial Commission, which is, I think, by all measure a pretty neutral, non-political body, um, has filed a complaint against uh, <coughs> Justice Gableman for knowingly using um, an improper or an ad that he knew uh, to c contain false information uh, in the Butler-Gableman race that Gableman, of course, ultimately won. Interestingly enough, he is now being tagged um, uh, for um, making fundraising calls uh, in the 2002 election when he was the Ashland County DA. And um, uh, so I, I, you start having concerns about how many investigations are going to happen after each election. I, I will argue that I think Justice Ziegler is going to have, it's going to be a long time before she lives down or lives away from or moves aside from the, the problems that she had in her election. I think that clearly the same thing is going to happen with, with Justice Gableman. And the problem is, this goes to the Supreme Court to decide, ultimately, if there's not a resolution. And um, boy, it's a bad way of doing business. I never thought I would come to this point. Um, but I'm beginning to think that at least at the Supreme Court level in Wisconsin, we ought to have appointed justices. If we aren't going to have public financing, even if we do have public financing, you can still use public money to put awful ads out, um, that we should appoint our, our justices instead of electing them. I, I, I mean, it is like the end of democracy in a sense, that we can't trust ourselves to be smart enough to run capable elections about Supreme Court justices. Life terms? Sure, why not? Mm, imitating the Supreme Court. I'm getting to believe that. Federal well. courts? I mean, that system certainly isn't uh, produced, I mean, it's produced some incredible judges and it's produced some incredibly act mediocre judges as well. I'm almost leaning the same way. Um, I'm just beginning to see how more and more people really do believe that um, you can buy a judge and, I, and, and, and judges never are candid enough to talk about this when the few that I get a chance to talk to. But, you know, if you've got to look over your shoulder all the time and worry about whether an ad is going to, that could misrepresent a position you took even when you're not a judge um, or a case you ruled on 10 years ago, I mean, courts were designed in our system to stand up for minority rights, at least on occasion. It's awfully difficult to do this in this environment. And i beginning to believe that we, at least in the Supreme Court um, level, we should probably allow governors and the legislature and the Senate uh, to, to, you know, to mimic the federal model. It's, I'm very concerned uh, Justice Abramson's coming up next spring, and I just think that's going to be another just ugly, horrible, expensive campaign. And I don't know if we're going to be any better off a, a Supreme Court system for it. I mean, Justice I mean, Abrahamson do, does now have, I mean, she started running the day after Louis Butler was defeated, and yeah. uh, she's an indefatigable campaigner. Yeah. Uh, she's remarkable. Um, but it's, and I can't, and I, I apologize, I can't remember the judge's name. It's Randy, begins with a K, and um, he used to be a public defender, but he has in his press release painted himself as a conservative, conservative. and... Um, so it's it's it is interesting to me um, as to, to as to how the Abrahamson campaign will play out, uh, and certainly the Chief Justice has been out there. <laughs> I mean, she really is pretty tireless, and I think she has lined up a huge amount of, of support from law enforcement. Um, last time she ran, I think she had 70 out of 72 sheriffs supporting her. Um, and so, for somebody who's alleged to be you know soft on crime and so forth, I'm. You know, Apparently, law enforcement doesn't think so. Um, but I'm beginning to think that, that that may need to be what happens. Well, I, I, you know, I hate to see us go to appointment uh, without trying some remedial 
um, work uh, and present system. I think one, uh, we need to take seriously the transgressions of these judges. I think Gableman should not be given just a slap on the wrist. I think um, if there's consequences for behaving like uh, a political goon in running for a Supreme Court, uh, maybe they'll think twice about it. But if it's just a slap on the hands and they know that there's no repercussion for being totally uh, ab abrasive, and abusive, uh, they're going to continue to do it. So that's, I think, one thing that has to be done. Somebody has to have guts enough to start saying, hey, you behaved like a, a, a thug here, and here are some serious consequences. If we don't do that, like I said, there's no consequence. The other is public financing. I think if you can put public financing in place, um, I, I think you can start <coughs> setting criteria. You can maybe have the accountability board look at some of the ads. Uh, courts have basically said if you accept public money, you can put some type of strings attached and some, some type of quality control on this whole thing. Maybe that's what we ought to do. The problem I have, I guess, with appointment is that it's going to be a governor, of course, who's going to take whatever wishes. You can have a, maybe some good retired judges and do a screening process and maybe add some type of uh, high... Um, honor to, to selection process, but it's still going to get down to the governor. Then it's going to go to the state senate, and 33 people are going to be lobbied by people like Right to Life and others, and all of a sudden one issue is going to probably be uh, the, the factor and whether that body even takes up the nomination or not. So I'm not so sure Just knowing... Like the Supreme Court. Yeah. U.S. Supreme Court. Yeah, so yeah. knowing the process, uh, putting that on the state level and how it operated under the Clinton administration and, you know, other, well, we've seen, the, you know, as you mentioned, the U.S. Supreme Court, the shenanigans that go on, I don't know if that's always going to be the pure system uh, that, we, that we're looking for on a state level either. I know. It's, it's, it, it, it is hard, but I think the interesting thing is, I mean, what Justice Ziegler did <coughs> to me uh, by taking cases where her husband was a, 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 an interested party Although I think, I think it is true that there was never any proof that her husband benefited from her presence on the case and so forth. But it was something, it was something she should have been aware of. But the Judicial Commission's complaint against Gableman um, has some fairly striking uh, uh, charges of deliberately misrepresenting. Sure. Butler's Butler record. was not a judge, and it was not a decision to let this guy go. I mean, it's clearly a false ad. It was clearly, clearly yeah. a false ad. And we're used to those. I mean, because they're, I, I just would suggest to you they're all false. Uh, but to varying degrees. To, to varying degrees, but well, to this one have the over. name this right. One. That's, yeah, well, yeah, that's it, true. It, it, the name was yeah, right. That was about it. Yeah. <laughs> so that's all you need. Yeah, yeah just need exactly. The right name. We were the Korea, wrong name. But I think. <laughs> I, I, I do think this is more serious from my perspective. Yeah. And then making phone, fundraising phone calls <clears throat> you know, six years ago, I, I mean, that may be, it might have been a really stupid thing to do. I don't think yeah, that necessarily. A whole bunch of legislators did the same thing, and it, they were, you know, yeah. there was some repercussion there. So right. he was doing what a lot of other people were doing. Yeah, and, yeah. and, and not to excuse that if, in fact, that is what happened. Um, but I, I would tend to agree with you, I think, um, and no practicing lawyer, of course, is going to comment on what uh, should happen to a Supreme Court justice. But in any event, I would just uh, suggest that, um, you know, that that, that was... Um, I, would, I would like to make just a little comment. We're arguing about two uh, Democratic, quote, leaning justices that lost, and the Democrats on this group here tend to say things are shenanigans. Now, if it were Republicans that lost, I don't know if this discussion would go on. So I just wanted sure to would. throw that in there. <laughs> sure it would. Oh, I think it no, would. No, I don't come. think it would. Uh, sure it would. Because you wouldn't see anything wrong. <laughs> That's the way it, I mean, because. If I, was had, if I had a judge that because whatever the, democratic leaning means, well, you're, and they produced yeah. a blatantly false ad that really perhaps may have swung an election, I would be not happy about that at all. No. And to suggest that that a judge that it's partisan as to whether or not a judge well, doesn't doesn't recuse herself. Yeah. Yeah. But there are basic yeah. standards of conduct that I think apply to Democrats and Republicans, and it's that kind of partisanship, Tom. If you really if if you're so cynical to think that we can't have standards for Democrats standards. or Republicans, and people vote for them. 
As I mentioned earlier, ACORN, which is a wonderful national community organizing group that helps poor people with basic, basic services, it grieves me to say that they appear to be fairly corrupt on this voter registration so, stuff. Yeah, and, so. and, they're and that that and they're that does good. yeah, that, it's a mixed metaphor yeah. or mixed terming yeah. there. But a I, corrupt I'm just, good organization. I'm just saying that no matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, there are things that are right and there are things that are wrong. And somehow in our public life we seem not to care about that anymore. And so I guess that's the concern I have. But that's my American president's okay. speech. Much shorter than Ken Risto's, <laughs> I must say, same. but <laughs> now we only have six loyal listeners, so in any event. Um, uh, interesting stuff. We'll see what happens. We only have a few minutes left. I'd like to talk just a little bit about um, the, um, the Janesville closing that I alluded to in our, in our city uh, show. Interestingly enough, the, the, the union contract, they must have known something was in the works because the contract provides for pay, 85% of their, of their uh, pay for two years will be paid even after the layoff. But do you remember the extraordinary extent that Doyle, Governor Doyle went to to try to get GM to change its mind uh, in there? I mean, they had meetings and there was task force and whatever. And now not only are they closing it, they're closing it a year early. I think the market's dictating it. I mean, the- I agree. Yeah, the, we're becoming a green culture, we're becoming energy conservationist uh, culture, and SUVs are drying up. And, and that's what that plant was making. And that's what that plant was making, so you make a business decision, why hang around for a year? We should close early. Yeah. Well, and, and this week, uh, General Motors has made overtures to Chrysler to merge, and if they do, they're going to inherit a whole bunch of plants that they probably will have overcapacity just by the fact they merged two big companies. And Chrysler's not known for making green cars either. No. Yeah. So. And I think the Janesville plant is among the oldest uh, mm -hmm. of the GM plants, so it's not, it's like an old state hospital. Of the art. It's not right. state of the art and uh, everything is expensive to maintain and it's harder to be efficient and, yeah. and, and all of those things. But that is, and Janesville is not a huge place, it's 1,250 jobs. And so That's, it's. Yeah, big community impact. Yeah. You know, so it, uh, it really is a kick in the teeth. Um, and it will be interesting to see long term how our economy will survive all of this. And uh, we were just, Wisconsin was just beginning to kind of turn the bend in terms of seeing increased tax receipts that had not been anticipated, you know, maybe to help to balance the budget a little bit. In our last 30 seconds, I just want to tell you and our faithful six listeners, maybe five now, that Ringo Starr has indicated that he is no longer answering any mail. His fan club is now defunct. The Donahue Group has a small fan club. I think we have one member, um, but in any of it, among the, and it's not the four of us, um, but uh, just to let you know, are. no more calls, no more emails, no more letters to Ringo Starr. It will go unanswered and your life will be broken anyway. We will see you hopefully around election time. Take care. <laughs>